Hello students, today we are going to discuss about development of tongue, anomalies of tongue, face and palate. In this video, we are going to learn about the introduction, parts, formation, type of papilla and developmental anomalies of tongue, face and palate. First, the introduction of tongue. The largest single muscular organ inside the oral cavity is called the see, tongue. It originates from the muscles of occipital myotomes. It migrates to the floor of the developing oral cavity and forms the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of tongue. The tongue is innervated by 5th, 7th, 9th and 10th cranial nerves. The extensive innervation is due to the long distance the muscle cells migrate to reach the tongue and varied functions performed. The muscles travel in the path of these various nerves. Then parts of tongue. The first pharyngeal arch tissue forms the anterior or mobile body of the tongue. The second and third arches forms the posterior or immobile body and base. The tissues of the tongue has three parts, the central tuberculum impar and two lateral lingual cellings. We are going to learn about formation of tongue. The tongue begins to develop at about fourth weeks. Local proliferation of the mesenchyme then gives rise to a number of swellings in the floor of the mouth. First, a swelling, the tuberculum impar, arises in the midline in the mandibular process and is flanked by two other bulgings. They are called as the lingual swellings. Very quickly, these lateral lingual swellings enlarge and merge with each other and the tuberculum impart to form a large mass from which the mucous membrane of the anterior two-third of tongue is formed. The root of the tongue arises from the hypobrachial eminence, a large midline swelling developed from the mesenchyme of the third arch. The hypobrachial eminence is the primordial of epiglottis thin plate of cartilage in front of the glottis that protect it during swallowing. The mesenchyme of the third arch rapidly overgrows that of the second arch which is thereby excluded from further involvement in development of tongue. The hypobrangial eminence gives rise to the mucus covering of the root or the posterior one-third of tongue. Some authorities divide the hypobrangial eminence into an anterior copula which gives origin to the mucosa covering the root of tongue and a hypobrangial eminence which gives rise to the epiglottis. The tongue separates from floor of the mouth by a downgrowth of ectoderm around its periphery which subsequently degenerate to form the lingual sulcus and gives the tongue mobility. The muscles of the tongue have a different origin. They arise from the occipital somites which have migrated forward into the tongue area carrying with them their supply that means the 12th cranial nerve or the hypoglossal nerve. This unusual development of the tongue explains its innovation. Since the mucosa of the anterior two-third of the tongue, it is derived from the first arch. It is supplied by the fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal nerve, whereas the mucosa of the posterior one-third of the tongue, which is derived from the third arch, which is supplied by the ninth cranial nerve or the hypoglossal nerve. The body and the base of the tongue is differ in structure of mucous membrane. 
anterior or the body it is papillary in nature and the posterior or base it is lymphatic in nature these are separated by a v-shaped sulcus it is known as sulcus terminalis the anterior two-third is divided into two lateral halves by lingual septum which is manifested externally as median sulcus the dorsal mucosa covering the anterior part is velvet like in appearance because the presence of invaginations and evaginations known as lingual papilla then we are going to learn about the clinical anatomy of tongue face and palate first condition it is known as the macroglossia it showing large tongue in oral cavity second condition it is known as microglossia it showing small tongue in oral cavity sometimes thyroid may present in tongue this condition called intralingual thyroid then we are going with the anomalies of face first we can discuss about a hair lip the upper lip of wild hair has a cleft there is a cleft in upper lip of human being that condition it's called as the hair lip the lateral facial cleft the maxillary process does not fuses with the lateral nasal process it may give rise to a cleft running from medial angle to the eye to mouth the lacrimal duct it is not found in this cases the unilateral or bilateral cleft lip one or both maxillary process does not fuses with medial nasal process may give rise to one or two cleft in the upper lip median cleft upper lip defective development of lower part of frontonasal process may give rise to midline defective upper lip median cleft lower lip two mandibular process does not fuses with each other next we are going to discuss about developmental anomalies of palate incomplete or complete cleft palate including bilateral or unilateral cleft lip these occurs due to non fusion of palatine process of maxilla with each other with nasal septum and non fusion of the maxillary process with median nasal process this picture showing bilateral complete cleft palate with bilateral hair lip because of the non fusion of palatine process of maxilla and the nasal septum in this picture showing unilateral cleft palate and unilateral hair lip because the non fusion of maxillary process of palatine bone with the frontonasal process the diagram c and d showing midline cleft extending into the hard palate and bifid uvula thank you for watching video